computer. Okay, there. Could I have, and welcome back, Sister Bacchus. Do you hear us any better this time, or is it still cutting out? It's actually better now, so I'm glad I was able to do that. <laughs> Fantastic. Glad you could. Okay. Could I ask, Sister Mora, would you be comfortable offering our opening prayer? Thank you. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to have this opportunity to gather together, to learn of thee, to learn about becoming better teachers of thy word, that we might better worship and understand thee. We ask thee to please bless us, that thy spirit will attend us, that we may hear and take heart with those things that we personally need to learn and incorporate. We say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Let's make sure you can all see it before we continue forward. Just give me a thumbs up, if you would, if you can see the PowerPoint with the picture of Christ. You see that? Okay. Awesome. Please, at any point here, if you're raising a hand or want to say anything and I don't see you, or if you're in the chat and I don't see there, um, everyone just help me out. Come off mute at any time. Share at any time. Question, whatever else. And uh, I, I believe very much, so like I said at the beginning, in the power of everyone teaching one another as we all seek together to invite the Holy Ghost. So today I've been asked to lead this discussion on teach from the scriptures and words of Latter-day Prophets. And I'd like to start simply diving right into the scriptures. So if you have your own scriptures with you, I'd invite you, whether on the phone or, or elsewhere, a hard copy, I'd invite you to go to Luke 4. I will also bring up Luke 4 on the screen here, if you're unable to get there. Um, but as we're looking at these verses, I would like everyone just to think about and be prepared to talk about what you learn about teaching from this simple example of the Savior. So let me get over there. So here, Christ is, has been out in the wilderness. He's fasted 40 days. He's been tempted of the devil and passed with shining colors. And now he is in Galilee and he goes into a synagogue. And uh, Sister Bacchus, do you mind starting to read there in verse 14? Would you be able to do that for us? And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all of the region about round about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit. Oop, you just went on. You just went on mute for that last one. Go ahead. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Okay, we're going to read a couple more, but uh, I believe we're all familiar. Isaiah, I believe there is Isaiah, so it's quoting from Isaiah. If you read three more, please. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Okay. And all bear him witness and wondered. And they weren't too happy with him, <laughs> with him for what he was saying through reading these verses. My question I want to pose to all of you, and thank you, Sister Bacchus, wonderful reading again, is what do you learn about teaching from the simple example of the Savior? And feel free, please, just to come off mute as you have a thought. And I'll pause and just let you think for a moment. What do you learn about teaching from this example? He started with the scriptures. Thank you. And who, who was that? Sister Shof. Sister Shof, thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else want to add? What do you learn? Maybe you want to jump off of what Sister Shof said. It started with the scriptures. It's interesting. He started with Isaiah. Mm, why do you think that's interesting? Sister I Stephen? think uh, Isaiah had a lot of um, 
words and prophecy about the Savior. Hmm. In fact, when he comes to the Americas, he tells everyone, great are the words of Isaiah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I think it's worth paying attention when the Savior quotes somebody to see if they quoted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and surely he's given us an example of quoting Isaiah. Why do you think, what can we learn in your minds? What can we learn from the fact that Jesus didn't stand up there and start talking, but he quoted a prophet from the scriptures? He started with the thing they had in common. Um, and um, we talked about this in, a, in another one of these classes, but to have confidence in the scripture's ability to speak for itself. Confidence in the scripture's ability to speak for itself. Now, and maybe my question's inappropriate, because if I understand the culture here, they would get up and read scripture. That's what they were doing. But uh, I still think this is instructive that way. Anyone else want to comment, bounce off of what's been said so far? I noticed something that it said he returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And so I feel like that is telling us he had the spirit with him when he went to testify of these scriptures. And then he didn't um, interpret the scriptures for them. He just told them that this had been fulfilled. Hmm. And they understood, did they not? They didn't like it, but they understood what yeah. he was saying. Go ahead, Sister Bacchus. Yes. The part to, that gets to me, and it, I get emotional about it, is um, verse 18, because um, our youth that we teach in seminary, they are, many of them are brokenhearted. They're going through so much right now, and I have a lot of needs in my classroom, and, and the fact that it, it points that out, that he preached to the poor, to the brokenhearted, and, you know, I just, I love that. I think it's interesting, um, after general conference, we did an exercise with the kids where they picked a favorite quote from conference and we went out and drew them in the sidewalk. Um, and a majority of the class, we had them pick two quotes and a majority of the class picked when John is quoted, um, if they hate you, they hated me first. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's really interesting that a majority of kids would identify with that. Great insight, Sister Mora. And Sister Bacchus, I love how you've immediately gone to relevance, to application of this verse. I'm philosophizing a little with you, but you've gone right into the meat of what Christ was, was reading there and of his mission, his purpose. And thank you very much. Anyone else want to comment before we, we move forward with this idea? Okay. I want to just spend another minute or so, not long, and let's just brainstorm. Can you think and feel free to scrim, skim through your scriptures? What other examples can you find, can you think of, of Christ using scripture to teach or expounding scripture? And go ahead, come off mute and just throw it out or write in the chat. Um, I'm going to be quiet for about a minute, like I say, and just let you think and, and brainstorm. And, and when you have something, share it, please. I like the story where the, the Savior is caught teaching at 12 in the synagogue, where his family's got to come back and get him. And what are you doing here? Um, because it's, it's a sense of confidence that youth can learn the scriptures, that they can see the Savior understanding and being able to teach for them at 12 years old. And so at 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, they can have confidence that that is a skill they can learn. Amen. Love it. Thank you. So we have him teaching at the age 12. What other examples can you think of? I don't think that he was actually teaching at this time, but I always pointed this out. Just I'm being tempted by Christ. 
he used scriptures to um, rebuke or, or to say, I'm not going to do that. And so there is power in the scriptures to resist temptation. And so and maybe he was trying to teach Christ, uh, teach Satan. I don't know. But I have always loved that, that example and try to get the youth to understand that when you know the scriptures, you can resist the temptations of Satan that come to you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Any others? And I don't want to dwell on this too long, but I just, I want to give a picture, just remind us that the Savior himself, who is really ultimately the source of all light and truth, the source of these scriptures, chooses to quote them and expound upon them so often in his interactions with us. I think there's a lot we can learn from that about their power. So not hearing anyone else, if there's anyone else, please stop me. I don't want to go on if you have something to share. But if I don't hear you, don't see it here. I'm going to we'll move forward to this next quote. Now, I would ask Sister Beecham, can you see that? Can you go ahead and come off mute and read that to us? This is from our brand new Teaching in the Savior's Way manual. For some of you, you may not be aware, but on Sunday, hopefully all of us are aware, on Sunday, Elder Uchtdorf introduced to the church a brand new revised version of teaching in the savior's way and are now as seminary and institute teachers this is our manual we no longer have our gospel teaching and learning handbook I mean, we have it but now our source main source is this handbook so we're quoting from that so go ahead sister beecham although jesus grew in wisdom and knowledge throughout his life he was not formally educated like other religious leaders of his day and yet when he taught, the people marveled saying, how knoweth this man letters having never learned? Why were his teachings so powerful? How would you answer that question? Before we see the second half of this, of this paragraph, how would you sisters answer this question? Why were his teachings so powerful being uneducated? Now, I don't mean that to be a rhetorical question. It may be, seem obvious, but humor me if you would. Why, why would you say, why were his teachings so powerful? Well, he was kind of one of the authors of the books. You know, he kind of had his input there. Was the source material. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. I would guess that his mom taught him an awful lot. And he taught with the spirit. And that's what really drives things home and makes it feel powerful. Fabulous comment. We do know that he had to grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God. And man, he had to learn, although he was... I think it was President David O. McKay that taught us, at least one of the prophets back then, taught us that he progressed so much more quickly because he was without sin. There was nothing to hinder his connection with God. And uh, so it came quickly to him, back to him. Okay, anyone else? Let's look at the second half then. Can you go ahead and continue reading that, Sister Beecham? Sure. says, my doctrine is not mine, the Savior explained, but his that sent me, it's John 7, 15 through 16, doctrine is eternal truth found in the scriptures and the words of Latter-day Prophets that shows us the way to become like our Father in heaven and return to him. Regardless of how experienced you are as a teacher, you can teach with power, as the Savior did, by teaching the Father's doctrine. You and those you teach will marvel at the blessings God sends when your teaching and learning are grounded in his word. Okay. Thank you, Sister Beecham, very much. So according, this is to everyone, according to that paragraph in our brand new manual, what is at least one reason it gives that Christ taught with such power? Maybe there's kind of two, one or two reasons there. What do you see? No sin. <laughs> One more time, Sister Fishbot. Oh, he was sinless. Okay. He definitely was sinless. And that, as we've been talking about, gave him power. Thank you. And what else do you see in that paragraph there? That it teaches as to why. He, he was teaching the Father's doctrine. So he was teaching doctrine. Very good. So doctrine, and specifically, it says the Father's doctrine. 
Yeah. It wasn't even his own. Ultimately, is the father's, right? And it says okay. it's the eternal truth. Doctrine is the eternal truth. Fantastic. Thank you for catching that. So drawing the implications for us, if we want to teach with power, then what do we need to do? Stick to the doctrine. Yeah. yeah. So what I'd like to ask you to do here, and, and again, the results, it, well, before we move forward, does any other wording or phrases or anything jump out at you? Or do you have any question as you look at this paragraph from our brand new handbook? I'm all about those blessings that God sends. You're all about them. Can you read those to us one more time, Sister Mora? You're on mute. I'm sorry. There we go. You and those you teach will marvel at the blessings God sends when your teaching and learning are grounded in his word. Okay. Sister Beecham, what were you saying? Thank you, Sister Mora. Just right above that, the line says that if we teach with the power as the Savior did, by teaching the doctrine, you know, we can have that same power if we're teaching the truths. If we start teaching non-truths, we're going to lose something, you know, I hope we get zapped, but you know. Uh, <laughs> zapped quick enough that we, we start teaching the truth. Okay. Th love it. I absolutely love it. And, and I naturally want to go to asking you to think about what experiences have you had that confirm this truth? But before we go there, I want to do what we ask our students to do. I want to ask each one of you to take a moment and in your own words, write in the chat as simple a statement of principle or truth as you can about how you and I can teach with power. So again, you're going to write a simple truth, a simple principle in the chat, in your own words. I can teach with power by whatever or something like that. Does that make sense? Yes, no. Um, okay, so I'll wait for you to write that in the chat. Go ahead and, and write it and click return and we can each see each other's. I, sorry, I, if you can hear me. Yes. I can. hear part of what you're saying, but I don't have the ability to do that. Okay, um, so in a moment, I'll just ask you to share out loud if you're comfortable with that, Sister Fishbaugh. In just a moment, if, I'll ask you to share how you would word that in a simple statement of truth. Principle. I and and I don't know what book you're talking about. I have nothing to read. Okay, I can, don't can, know what you're speaking of. No one has given me. Yes, I'm just speaking of this quote that we have on the screen right now. Can I you can't see, see it? <laughs> okay, okay. What well, sister? You can just listen then here. But sister <laughs> uh, right. Bacchus or Beecham had just read a quote from our our brand new teaching in the Savior's Way manual. And, and you can access that on our church website now in the gospel library if you go into books and lessons. Okay, I don't know that I can, but I will try to get someone is helping me today to do this. And, and Okay, but for the, right now, you can just listen and, and, and hopefully absorb and take in here. My hope again today is not really to present or teach anything new, but to allow the Holy Ghost to witness and confirm how important it is to teach the Father's doctrine from the scriptures and words of prophets. So, okay, let's see. Let's go ahead. I'm going to look in the chat and I'll read through some of these. So, Sister Hansen says her statement, I can teach with power by starting my lesson prep and each morning with prayer. Thank you. Sister Julie Mora, I can teach with power by focusing on doctrine and allowing the students to offer their own applications. Great. Sister Beecham, I can teach with power and without fear if I'm prepared. Thank you. Sister Bacchus, I can teach with power as the Savior did if I hold on to the scriptures and gospel principles. Sister Newsom, I can teach with power by praying for the needs of the students before planning my lesson. Absolutely. I can teach with power when I am prepared and allow the Holy Ghost to guide me. So definitely you have brought in, sisters, you've brought in different aspects of teaching and how they increase our power. And I appreciate that very much. For the purposes of today's lesson, I want to emphasize this aspect of what brings us power. And this is just my own wording of what we were just looking at, the way I phrased it. And you may not 100% agree with this, and we may need to tweak it, but 
I can teach with power or we can all teach with power by using the scriptures and words of prophets to teach the father's doctrine. We can teach with power by using the scriptures and words of prophets to teach the father's doctrine. If in any way we maybe have started to look to other sources to engage and to help our students, I, I, I hope that the spirit will invite us back and increase our faith in the power of the word, both in the scriptures as well as in our, the words of our modern prophets there. Now, before moving on, do any of you have questions or do you think there's anything in this statement that needs to be clarified to better understand it before we seek to fill it and apply it? Are there any words or ideas in here that you have? I, I think that um, when we're looking at words of the prophets, we should go to the current prophet first um, and then look at other um, prophets after that. Why, Sister Mora? It's a great because question. <laughs> uh, I think it was Kimball. Today's news today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fantastic. What else do you feel like? I thank you. That's a wonderful clarification, increased understanding here. What else do you sisters see that may need to be clarified or understood better in this statement? What questions might we ask ourselves to make sure we understand this? I think it's important that we focus on that we're teaching the Father's doctrine. Sometimes when I'm teaching and I'm sticking to, and if I have an opinion of my own to say, I go, now this is from the gospel of Beecham, not, you know, to let them just know that this is my opinion. This is how I've interpreted what's being taught, you know, so that they know that that's not doctrine, you know, although it usually goes along with what the doctrine says, but just to keep it separate, what's the father's doctrine and what's my opinion, you know? <laughs> yes. And I'm grateful, grateful you do that. Um, yeah. Fantastic comment. Thank you. Anyone else want to react to what Sister Beecham or just yes, Sister Stevens? As I was reading this, it, I had the impression that we can teach with power by using the scriptures and words of the prophets, but we need to know them. I mean, you know, we can't teach what we don't know, right? And so if we want to teach with power, it's important for us to know the scriptures and the words of the prophets so that we can teach the Father's doctrine. Amen. Let me ask you, sisters, this. How do you know what is the Father's doctrine? Something I do tell the kids is that the scriptures is better than any book about the scriptures. So they should be starting with their source material and familiar with their source material. Um, I enjoy reading, you know, around the scriptures and seeing what other people have had to say. But you always have to start and end with the actual verses in the books so that you can not only read what they actually say, but listen to the spirit, see how they, you feel about them and what they mean to you. Um, a story that I... I shared with my kids is that um, when I got my patriarchal blessing at 16, I was really disappointed with how short it is. <laughs> um, and it was frustrating to me as a 16 year old, this was supposed to be this thing from my heavenly father. And I wanted this long missive and I didn't get it. Um, so what I started doing was collecting ensign articles and notes from EFY and all of the other sources that I could. Anytime somebody said something that was keyword into my patriarchal blessing, I tore that out or I made a note and I stuck it in a folder. After 40 years, my folder's about this thick. Um, so now what was a short blessing is now this long. Um, and so when they keep a journal, when they get their patriarchal blessing, anytime they have a keyword that goes back to those scriptures, those scriptures begin to take on a great deal of personal depth, not just what other people have had to say. Wow. What a neat example. And I can't help but think how much, how pleased the Lord is with his daughter that's paid that price to understand his message to her through the patriarchal blessing. 
if I understood that right. That's, thank you, Sister Mora. Sister Bacchus, you're smiling and you have a great comment in there about it's hard to help them understand personal revelation. Do you want to say anything else about that? I, I mean, I, I think that's the key thing is, you know, we can teach them all we can, but unfortunately we can't transfer testimonies to them. So ultimately they have to get their own testimony. And so as they read this, it's like a muscle. They have to, you know, practice and build that muscle of, you know, reading scriptures, praying and receiving that personal revelation. And as teachers, we can, obviously we can teach them how we do it, but everyone has their own personal way of doing that. And that's one of the most challenging things, I think, as a teacher. Thank you, Sister Vakas. Sister Green, welcome. I think you've just come on here. Do you, do you have any comments or questions? Um, well, I've been on here. I just turned my camera on because okay. I wanted to, I, I was just listening to the comments and it, um, I, I think anytime we share what that, I, somebody said, you know, this is doctrine according to sister, whoever, but I, I think that when we share what we heard and how it applied to our life, it, it, uh, it opens up that door for the, the youth to say, okay, what, what did I hear and how does it help me in my life where I am right now? And, um, you know, yes, it turns into a, a file that's very, very big as the years go by, but they don't even know that they can do that sometimes, or they don't even trust themselves that they really felt what they felt. And I, so I think when we share that personal application of what we heard and why we knew it was right for us at the phase of life we're in, it gives them permission to do the same thing. <clears throat> so I, I think sharing those things are really important. I know that we need to stick to the scriptures and the prophets, but giving them a real life application, I think is part of what allows them to have permission to, to implement that in their own life and being a little bit vulnerable with them too, you know? Um, I, uh, I, ahead, to, yeah, I, I don't know how to do the things of raising your hand or uh, my phone is just not working. I'm sorry. You're I hope fine. you can hear me. Yes, we can. But, but I, I, too, I have been teaching for such a short time, but I thought it was important because we came into our classroom with not having a trust of each other. Our ward was extremely divided on some issues and we're trying to get closer. And I wanted them to know that we were a family. And so once a week, I would have them write a concern of theirs that we could only answer through the scriptures. And we have this bowl, I call it the bowl of enlightenment. And we, it has this little light in the bottom of the bowl and they put all their questions. One day, we usually do it on Wednesday to divide up the things so they can take the rest of the scriptures throughout the week and think about how it applied to the serious issues that they're can, having in their lives. And no one is, we're all anonymous. So everybody that puts their thing in there, we all pick out something of the bowl and we all see if we can help this person figure out how to answer their problems through the scripture. And we have gotten closer to each other. Maybe we don't know the person that is having that problem, but because we're really trying to help them, we're understanding someone else's trials and problems. And we've become so much closer to the point that one of the students wrote, I think it would help me if we knelt for prayer every morning and before we close. And we have been doing that for the last year. We do not pray without kneeling. Sister Fishboss, thank you for sharing. And, and wow, 
I'm so, I love the fact that you went, you've had the faith in the scriptures and you've led them to the scriptures. There's such power in that. Now, going back to Sister Green's comment too, Sister Green, I, I don't, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to be misunderstood or teach incorrectly here. What we're talking about is starting with the scriptures. There's power in the words and how they're shared. The scriptures are a source of a fountain of revelation and they allow the Holy Ghost then to prompt us and teach us individually and collectively how this is relevant to our lives. And so one of the things I heard in your comment, Sister Green, is this relevancy, likening it, as Nephi called it, to our lives. And that's absolutely essential. In no way am I, am I trying to say we should not then talk about how it relates to our life. In fact, we need to. We need to understand the doctrine and then apply it to our lives and, and figure out how to actually implement it and take action upon it so we can become. Uh, does, that, does that fit in, Sister Green, with, with what you're saying there? Does that sound all right? Awesome. Thank you for your comments. So speaking of this idea of relevance then, of likening and staying in the scriptures and words of modern prophets, I would like to ask us to do a little brain work again. And that is this. I would, I'm going to give you a few minutes and then I'm going to put you in a, in one or two, in a couple of breakout rooms to share, but I want you to go to the scriptures or go to the gospel library and search for words of living prophets, but what scriptures or words of modern prophets help you better understand the relevance or the importance of this principle, the relevance or the importance of teaching from the scriptures and words of prophets, teaching the father's doctrine from those things. What helps you better understand and clarify what that means, feel of its importance, etc. Does that make sense? Now, to get you started, if, if you want, these are some scriptures that might help you that way. You don't even need to look at these. But if you're like, where do I go? You might start here, look at cross-references, etc. I'm going to give you, I'll put my timer on, three minutes for starters. And again, just look for what scriptures or words of prophets help you better understand and or feel the importance of and the relevance to your life and that of your students of this principle. And I'll put this principle in the chat one second too. I've written my question again in the chat, just in case you're still wondering what exactly is he asking me to do?
Yes, Sister Green. I'm ready to comment if anybody, if you're ready. Thank you, Sister Green. What I'd like to do is give everyone, well, get, let me know how many are ready. How many have at least a quote or at least a scripture? Give me a thumbs up or, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, let me give you five. One more minute, and then I'll put you in, in two or three breakout groups so everyone can have a chance to share here. So thank you, Sister Green. Just another minute. Okay, when I when I put you in these breakout rooms, Sister Green, if you don't mind just leading off in your room, and Sister Beecham, if you could lead off in your room, and Sister Hansen in your room, and just go around, and if, if you don't have something to share, that's fine, you can just pass, but if you do, I'd love to have each of you have an opportunity just to share a scripture or a quote that helps you better understand the relevance and the importance of, of teaching the Father's doctrine from the scriptures or words of prophets. Before I put you in the group, any questions? We good? Okay, here we go. Thank you. Sister Green, can you see to accept to go into the breakout room? Damn what the Lord would have. <laughs> I'm quoting from President Nelson in his 2019 talk, Spiritual Treasures. Fantastic. Um, where he says, you won't find this process spelled out in any manual. The Holy Ghost will be your personal tutor as you seek to understand what the Lord would have you know and do. He talks about the process. Um, and then he says, I invite you to prayerfully study section 25 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, so here he says, here's a prophet speaking, use the spirit, look at these scriptures. I think what I really enjoy after conference is to go through and look at all the scriptures that are annotated in their talks. So you have direct scripture and voices in teaching. We must joyfully raise our voices in teaching his doctrine, even when it may seem a stumbling block to some and foolishness to others. For it is the power of God and to salvation to everyone that believeth. That's that's excellent. I, I am actually scared, <laughs> I am actually scared to death to teach Isaiah this fall. I was oh. really hoping Isaiah would fall in the come follow me during the summer. <laughs> but no, week oh. two of school is five weeks of Isaiah. So I have started a summer program of studying Isaiah, um, just so that I've I've never been able to wrap my brain around Isaiah, and I think because. All I've heard all my life was how horrible it is to understand Isaiah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I've put up that block to where, oh, I'm not going to be able to understand Isaiah, you know, and now I've got to <laughs> teach Isaiah. So it's time for me to get over that stumbling block and, and get my brain wrapped around Isaiah. So it's, yeah. I've got to understand what that doctrine is that Isaiah wants to teach. So, and you know, I think the come follow me lessons are wonderful because to me, they, simplify things make it easier for me to understand i'm understanding some things and making it clearer than i have before I was doing the come follow me so I, that might be a help yeah you know using some well, of the lessons from come follow me brother beasley what we talked about right before you jumped in was boy kate packer's comment that says true doctrine understood unchanged changes our attitudes and our behaviors and mm -hmm. um 
I focus that a lot in, in my seminary class when we teach those doctrines, you know, that they need to understand it, fully understand what it means. I, that's Fishbot, one of my, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, Sister Fishbot hasn't commented yet, so. Okay. No, I'm going to pop I, to our last, our last group, but thank you. This is wonderful stuff. Thank you. Not for anyone else. No, I understood, Sister Bacchus. Were you not able to hear me, Sister Henson? It's probably just my connection. No worries. Oh. No need to repeat. Okay, sorry. I heard you just fine, if that makes you feel better. Has everyone had a chance to share in here in this in this breakout room? Not yet. I was about to go. Okay. I'm just I'm just observing, just seeing how things are going. So I'll be quiet and let you go, Sister Shop. <laughs> okay. Um, I looked at uh, First Nephi 15, I think it was 24, <clears throat> where he says, if you hold fast to the word of God, the devil's fiery darts can't blind you, and then he can lead you to destruction if you don't. Um, that seems to make so much sense to me with teaching. If we just stick with the actual word of God instead of, I mean, games and all are great. I think they're fabulous teaching tools, but if that's the entire focus of the class is just goofing off, then we're not learning anything that day. And he can, it's more easy for the spirit to walk out and say, okay, you guys have fun. I'll teach you next time you're ready to talk about the scriptures. So it has to be um, focused on scriptures and the word of God if we want to learn anything together. I'm grateful I popped into this room at that time. What a powerful principle. Thank you, Sister Shaw. Okay, I'm going to hop out and close room so you'll have 60 seconds to tie up. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I think we're all back. Thank you. I enjoyed popping into each class and just hearing what was what was shared. I'd like to ask this question of you. I, I don't want to ask necessarily what was shared, but I want to know, would anyone be willing to share any impressions you had as you shared and listened? to your peers sharing your breakout rooms? Any thoughts, impressions, feelings you had as you listened and as you participated? I like that Sister Green talked about a verse and then talked about who she wanted to share it with. So she read something and she immediately was inspired to say, this person needs to hear me talk about this. And that can happen with students. Who can testify of that here, that that happens, that God puts people in our minds when we're in the scriptures, we're in the words of prophets. Anyone want to come off and testify? doesn't have to be I testify, but just want to add your amen. Go ahead, Sister Stevens. Well, I work with the teachers more than the students, you know. But I have had that impression with, um, excuse me, um, a new called online teacher that was very fearful 
of you know doing online and doing the zoom and all that and um you know this, this just like the scripture we just talked about um if you are prepared you need not fear and we talked about that and that teacher has just done remarkably well this year and i have prayed for him and um he has just um grown so much spiritually and became one of our best teachers because he is relying on the spirit to teach and he is studying the doctrine so that he can and he knows his students even though they come from different wards throughout the state and uh, i have i have seen that in this brother and it has been a wonderful experience thank you sister Stephen. what a blessing i think he has to have you as a supervisor love it <laughs> So we have about five more minutes. And what I'd like to do is this. I would like to share with you a couple quotes and scriptures just quickly and kind of bear my testimony. And then I want to give you a few more moments at the end to ponder on two application questions for yourself as you go forward. And But feel, still feel free, please, to stop me as I go through these and comment or ask questions. Mm -hmm. But some of you may have looked at this. This is one of the verses I gave you, but it's one of my all-time favorites relative to the power of the scriptures, especially in the confusing world we're in with such an information overload through the internet, social media, et cetera, and so much information that is twisted and tweaked just enough that it's very hard to tell the truth and see through things. And in Helaman, I believe this is Mormon, if I remember correctly, commenting, yea, we see that whosoever will may lay hold upon the word of God. We all now, all of our youth have the word of God if they've downloaded it on their phone or on the internet right there in their pocket in hand all day long. If they choose, they can lay hold upon it, which is quick and powerful, which shall divide asunder all the cunning and the snares and the wiles of the devil. And lead the man or woman of Christ in a straight and narrow course across the everlasting gulf of misery, which is prepared to engulf the wicked and land their souls basically in the kingdom of heaven. But I do with all my heart believe the more we can demonstrate and show them in class the power of the word in their lives, the more we can be in the scriptures and teach powerfully by the spirit with love that doctrine, they'll begin to trust more fully and want to lay hold more upon that word. Moving forward here, um, this was already commented on in one of your groups, maybe multiple groups, another one of the verses. This is Nephi commenting to his brothers about what the iron rod meant in his father's vision and his vision, that it was the word of God and whosoever would hearken to the word of God and would hold fast unto it, they would never perish. Neither could the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them. I believe those promises. I have sensed that power in my life and seen it in others. As we understand true doctrine, the Father's doctrine from the scriptures. And then a couple just quotes. This was Elder Scott. To know what the voice of the divine sounds and feels like, read his words, study the scriptures and ponder them. If you want your children or your students to recognize, understand and act on the promptings of the spirit, you must study the scriptures with them. And then President Nelson, recently in April 2020, we can go to the scriptures, they teach us about Jesus Christ and his gospel, the magnitude of his atonement, and our Father's great plan of happiness and redemption. Daily immersion, which you've already commented on, in the word of God is crucial for spiritual survival, especially in these days of increasing upheaval. As we feast on the words of Christ daily, the words of Christ will tell us how to respond to difficulties we never thought we would face. Now, of course, when I initially read this, I'm thinking of personal study, but I believe it definitely applies to us studying, being in the word, teaching the doctrine with them. And last off, immerse yourself in the scriptures. This is from 2021 April conference. Immerse yourself in the scriptures to understand better Christ's mission and ministry. Know the doctrine of Christ so that you understand its power for your life. The more you learn about the Savior, the easier it will be to trust in his mercy, his infinite love, and his strengthening, healing, and redeeming power. I just witness and testify to you from 
personal experience and because the spirit has told me as it's told you, there is power in the word of God. There is power in studying and using the words as they appear in scripture to, to mine out and identify doctrine and then better understand it and apply it to our lives. So this is the two questions I want to leave with you before our closing prayer and allow you to ponder for a moment, maybe even write these down and think about them more. First off, what might you do to rely more on the scriptures and words of the prophets as you teach? And or how can you help those you teach know and love God's word? Or should we say the father's doctrine there? And these are both questions right out of our, our new manual teaching in the Savior's way. Before we close with a prayer, go ahead, Sister Hansen. This it does not relate to the questions that were just asked. I am going to reflect on those personally. However, I do like to ask religious ed educators, and we're talking about doctrine, what their definition of doctrine versus principle is. Fantastic. I don't know if anyone wants to talk about that or... or uh... I think that the, the, the prophets tend to use them fairly interchangeably because they are so close. But I think your root is the doctrine. Principles come off of that. Um, and then much lower down in the hierarchy, you get to um, policy and tradition. So you get, need to know where something falls. <laughs> well said. So again, doctrine are eternal fundamental truths of our Heavenly Father's plan. Like Jesus Christ performed his atonement. It's only through Christ we can be saved. And, and those doctrines, principle, as Sister Mora has said, generally come out of that doctrine. They're also universal truths. They're more packaged for application to our lives. And, and like she's talking about policy and practice and, and tradition and our own personal applications flow from that doctrine and those principles that, that we learn from it. Does that help at all, Sister Hansen? It does. I have an understanding of it. I just like to hear other people's when we're on the topic of doctrine. So thank you for that. How does that sit with your understanding and your thinking, Sister Hansen? Perfectly aligned. Okay. Thank you for that question. Is there anyone that wants to respond to either of these questions or just testify or share anything before we close with a prayer? And I thank you. This has been delightful for me. What a pleasure to be here with you and to fill of your spirit to learn with you. Um, so again, anyone want to say anything before we end? Well, yes, Dallin H said something really powerful that I wanted my students to know because I keep in touch with them. Make sure that they're reading over the summer, even though they're not in seminary right now. And he said something really powerful. He said, and, and he was like giving a principle out to the kids. And he says, it is possible to repent but it is a guarantee that if you do, you will be forgiven. And I was so amazed at the power of that statement and the power it had in touching my children who are struggling. That's a wonderful way, wonderful testimony, wonderful application. Uh, what we're talking about. Thank you, Sister Fishbach. Okay. Sister Stevens, could you offer our closing prayer?
Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful for this opportunity that, that we've had to meet together and to learn from one another how to become better at, at what we do in working with these students and, and teachers. We're very grateful for the spirit that has been here with us this day. And we pray that we can instill the teachings that we've had this day and into our hearts and minds and to be able to understand more about teaching the true pure doctrine of our savior and our heavenly father. We pray that thou will bless each one of us as we go forth this day, that our families will be safe and well, and that we will be able to have a better understanding of our purpose in our callings and be able to magnify them. We are very grateful for our savior and all that he has done for us. And we say this now in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you once more to everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday and wonderful Thank weekend. You. And you're welcome. Thank you. May you all be blessed. Take care.